Welcome again to another episode from Elite Legions. In this one, we're gonna be talking about some underrated units that got buffed recently. And the first one we have today is the Prefecture Heavy Cavalry. Till now, all the Prefecture units have proven worthy of obtaining. And those who used to be weak got actually buffed recently over the seasons. Just like the Heavy Prefecture Cavalry. So without any further ado, let's dig in. First thing is first, their X and normal moves are considered to be some kind of a charge right now. I don't know if this is a bug or no, to be honest with you, but we are abusing it anyways. So the first thing you will notice is when they hit a hero, they knock back the hero, which is good. And if you simply X near a wall, they will take damage which actually proves my point because no other cav does this. I mean, you only take damage if your cav actually charges the wall. Second thing is simply forget about their charge. Just ignore it like it doesn't even exist. Just look at them slicing and dicing reapers with merely X. Third point, they rely heavily on their speed and momentum. So the best way of abusing that is actually not walking beside them, but ordering them to dive or flank from a distance. Like literally go to a high ground and just like keep moving them around. To help you imagine what I mean by this is actually looking at how the cavalry moves in the rebel camps. I mean, just look at this video where I order them to dive and come back. But some berserkers had other things in mind and actually killed most of them while returning. Uh, last tip I would say is if you have five left or something, you can still play with them and do your thing or actually press V. They are very annoying in V. So, to summarize the heavy cavalry, I would say they are glass cannons. What do I mean by glass cannons? So, the part I just explained is the cannons. So let me show you the glass part. As you can see, versus any pikes, including pike militia, or any hero, they die super quickly. So I would recommend them in siege, but not in ranked, to pick off unaware, unexperienced targets. Their damage actually ranges from 2,500 to actually 6,500 as a critical hit. And sometimes their crit can actually reach up to 7400, and that's a lot. That's actually close to the 9k of the Hishik. The best use for them is versus melee targets with sword and shield or spears and shields, since guess what? They can break through shields easily. Of course, I'm not talking about the stalwarts and their brace because that's a different mechanic, but I'm speaking about the normal sergeants or any shields and and especially the Imperial Spearmen. The Imperial Spearmen are a very good target for them. Finally, these are the doctrines and the victory I'm using. In the end, I would say they are an A tier unit and an S tier unit if they are in good hands. Now let's move to the Prefecture Archers. Let me summarize this very quickly for you. Prefecture Archers deal half the damage of the Imperial Archers, yet with the Arrow Rain ability, they deal the same amount of damage with time, since they have twice the attack rate during that. And so, their Arrow Rain is not the same as equipping an Arrow Rain Doctrine on Imperial Archers, for example. Hence, the Arrow Rain Doctrine will reduce the damage of the single arrow by half, while increasing the rate of fire. 
while on the other hand, as I just mentioned, the arrow rain of the Perfection Archers gives you double the fire rate without any compromises. In other words, it doesn't reduce the single arrow damage, like the Doctrine does. Personally, I would put them as an A tier unit for Siege, since they have a very good range and fire rate. And this unit, believe me, is very versatile. Last but not least, we have the Rattan Marksman, where they really shine versus armored units. Yes, I'm talking about Modows, I'm talking about Creepers, etc. Compared to the Perfection Archers, due to their bleed damage and high fire rate, if they are in a close or a medium range to any other ranged unit, they will quickly kill them. That includes any archer units, including Imperial Archers and Perfection Archers as well. Since guess what? They have a huge defense advantage since they have Rattan armor, which gives them a very high piercing armor. In case you didn't know this, any Rattan unit have a very high piercing armor. And that's it for today. The last two things I need to mention are experience tips. For example, for the Imperial Archers, while using them, you will notice that pressing 1 actually reduces their accuracy. So it's not advised to actually use it versus blobs in range. Like for example, if you have a blob in your range of the Imperials, just press V. Do not use the skill number 1. But I would actually say quite the opposite for the Rat and Marksman, since the skill number 1 gives them faster reload speed and fire rate so actually abuse it whenever you have the chance. So to summarize this really quickly, when you're playing with the Imperial Archers, always use V and use the skill number 1 only for targets out of your range. While using the Rattan Marksman, always use the skill number 1 as long as you have the ammo or when you need to actually burst damage, sacrificing your ammo for damage. And remember, it's very effective versus blobs. And that was it. I hope this was useful, Warlord, and see you soon in the battlefield.